this is, this is, this is. Are you guys ready? Because I'm ready. I'm, I'm getting very ready. Welcome to the podcast. It's your host, your friend, your confidant. You guys call in, you leave voicemails, I talk about them. That's what this episode's gonna be all about. But first, I gotta tell you, mxpx.com, um, thanks for your orders. I've been sending them out. Um, Buffalo turned 25, or was it 25 years? Yeah, 25 years, that was the that was the number. We tend to not make a big deal out of um, anniversaries for records because it happens every year and it kind of gets old. But the big round numbers, the 25s, the, that's a pretty cool number. It's a milestone. So thank you, everybody that congratulated uh, MXPX on 25 years of slowly going the way of the Buffalo. Cool. So uh, we have some shows, and our first show of the year is coming up very soon. July 1st, we'll be in Trois-Rivières for the Festivoir Festival. Festival. I think it's just called Festival because that means festival, I think, in French. Um, somebody help me. I don't speak very good French, but uh, I know a few words. I know enough to get me by. It's going to be awesome. So MXPX is headlining Festival on Saturday night, July 1st. Face to Face is going to be supporting uh, Vulgar Machines, a bunch of other bands. It's going to be awesome. And then the next night is Dropkick Murphys and Teenage Bottle Rocket and the Queers and, and a lot of cool stuff. So Good times ahead. Uh, if you're already going, I will see you there, okay? Um, that's in Trois-Rivières, Quebec, Canada. So we'll be, we'll be Canadian for the weekend. All right, and then um, September 22, Furnace Fest in Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama Slamma, we're going to be riding that black snake. I, I don't know, like, <laughs> we're going to be, we have a, a really good set planned not we haven't even finished it yet of course we got a little time but furnace fest we're going to do a different set than we've ever done at any festival or headlining show we're going to heavily load it in certain ways and i'm just it, it's going to be cool so furnace fest you got plenty of time uh to get there but you don't have plenty of time to get tickets i would get tickets sooner rather than later make your plans, get your hotels, things like that. Find people that you know that already have rooms camped out because Furnace Fest 2023 is going to be epic. MXPX headlining Friday night, September 22, Amberlynn, Reliant K, Hate Breed, 90 Pound Wuss. The list goes on and on all day. It's amazing. It's going to be an amazing night. So come for Friday. Stay for the whole weekend. It's going to be epic. Uh, Pennywise is on Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Turnstile is on Saturday night. So it's 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 definitely one of those festivals that that I'm like, if I wasn't already playing, I'd be going. All right, and then we're we will be you know doing some things, but I think I think uh, the main thing is like you know we're gonna probably do some sort of meet and greet. We try to do meet and greets at all our headlining shows, but um definitely at these festivals, especially Festival, we're going to try to set up a meet and greet. In fact, Brad from MXPX team, Team MXPX, is going to be calling me right after this podcast. We're going to discuss some of the, the, the meet and greet stuff, but it's free. MXPX, um, unless we're forced to do things, I don't know, um, we're going to be doing free meet and greets, no charge, no VIP charge. You come up, you get, you can talk to us and, and get things signed and things like that. So it's going to be awesome. All right, you guys, uh, October 22nd and 23rd, we will be in Las Vegas, Nevada for the When We Were Young Fest, Green Day, Blink-182, MXPX, so many more. Offspring are going to be there. It's going to be awesome. So, so many of our friends are playing. It's going to be epic. All right, let's jump into your voicemails. This is going to be all about you today, all about you. You call in. The number is 1-360-830-6660. Call in. Leave me a voicemail. I listen to the voicemail. You guys all listen to the voicemail. I talk about it. Now, a lot of people talk about MXPX stuff, memories. I love all that. But if there's anything you just want to get off your chest, anything you want to talk about, you, got, you call me. We'll make it happen. We'll get it on there. All right, you guys, uh, shout out to Bob McKnight. I know it's not the end. I usually wait till the end to say his name, but he's a special guy. So why not just, just do it right now? All right, let's get to your voicemails. Let's see, let's see what you guys have for me today. Hey, Mike, this is DJ. Uh, been calling up a few times. 
now fully moved into Fort Wayne, Indiana. And hmm. let me tell you, even even though you said in the message it's kind of like Cincinnati with cows, which that is pretty accurate, <laughs> I, I feel a lot more at peace. Good. Um, Good. Got a couple questions. Um, one regarding the demos that you guys made before Poconata, and uh, as a longtime fan, I haven't been able to listen to them, and I, I know you guys might be embarrassed by it, but how, how uh, would you guys ever consider possibly doing an anthology kind of release with those old demos? Uh, granted, I'm, I'd be more excited about the new music, but I think it'd be a cool thing. And uh, my second question would be... Um, I'm trying, do you have any tips about forming a band? Um, currently, I'm trying to form a pop punk band out here. I've even got the name of it called Compulsive Prep. Um, I've made some flyers and I've put them in some of the stores, but would you have any, uh, would you have any tips and advice for trying to find band members? Thank you, and thank you for the podcast. You have a good day. DJ, dude, thanks for the call. Uh, first I'll say about the old demos, you know, that's something we would consider for sure in the future. It's something that we want to probably do when we don't have so much going on with new music. Like you said, you know, you're excited about the new stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's something in the future when we're ready to like look back on the past and look back a little deeper, we can find some of those, those first demos. We, we actually did release a seven inch. It was like a special seven inch we we pressed. It was a floppy that only, I don't know, we only had like 100 pressed or 50 pressed or something like that, and it was part of a, a package for our last album, the self-titled album. Um, we did it on Kickstarter, and it was something that somebody got, you know, for one of those packages, but one of those perks. But um, to answer your question, yes, maybe in the future. I'm not, it's kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, it's like I was a kid. Like, I'm not embarrassed of what I was or what I've become. I'm, I'm, I'm more amazed at how far we've come and how bad I was when I started and how, like, I feel like sometimes I'm bad now. Like, when I sing, I sing, out of, if I sing something out of tune or forget a lyric, I'm like, I'm bad now. But, like, wow, I was way worse back then in all ways. So, no, it's not embarrassing. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to, to just take a trip down memory lane. So, yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, glad you're settled into Fort Wayne, Indiana, <laughs> Cincinnati with cows. Um, cool spot, I'm sure, though. I mean, th there's 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 a few things going on. I've been there a few times, um, but I'm glad that you feel feel at ease, you feel at peace. It's awesome. Um, your band, how to find new band members? Um, you know, it's like finding love when you least expect it. There they are. But really, you have to be. Either just go to shows, you know, you know, I was talking to to Dave Smalley about how he joined some of his bands. And it, it, a lot of times it was just like he was a fan and he was going to see a show and he like met other guys that were fans of, of punk rock and of whatever, you know, the genre, hardcore. And, and that seems to be, you know, a tried and true way. Like, but you can't just do it once. You can't just like go to one show and expect I'm going to find I'm going to meet somebody like dudes don't even talk to their own friends. So you can imagine how hard it must be to, to meet a new band member. I mean, you can imagine you're trying, but I guess I'm talking to everybody else. <laughs> so, so, uh, so you can't, it's gotta be something that, that you do, you make a habit of. And, and I think that's really the best way is to, if, if you're looking for people in person, people in the scene, um, now, if you're looking for somebody to collaborate with online, say maybe you send a song idea and they send, they record onto it or record their own thing and send it back. And that's different. You know, that's, that's maybe you take that same idea, but then you go into different communities and different, different like-minded places where you already probably are like, say this podcast, is there anybody out there looking to start a, a band or a collab, you know, where you might just do it for fun. I don't know what, what your what your intentions are. Maybe you want to conquer the world. You want to destroy everyone. And that is awesome. So if that's what you want to do, then you have to go you have to go to start doing that. And people will see that and people will find you 
when you're doing that. Now, if you're more chill and you're just like, I, I want to start a band, I want to do some things, but I have a job, I have family, this, that, whatever. So I kind of wanted to just do it on the side with my buddies. Now, or new buddies, you know, people that you just meet that are playing music. Um, you know, that there's just so there's just so many ways to do it, but there's no real formula. You just have to be around. I, I hate to say it, but there's no easy button for absolutely anything. Um, going back to when I met Tom and Yuri, you know, MX Peaks was already banned when I met Tom. Um, so it started with, it actually started with Andy and myself. I started the band. I, I had actually was already jamming with a few other people, like on the side, like starting out. So MXPX wasn't the first music I played, but it was the first, the first real band, like where we had our own songs and, and stuff. So when I, you know, I, I was just hanging out with friends that, that got me into music. So, so, and then when I wanted to start MXPX, which ended up being MXPX, I didn't know it at the time, but I started with just Andy, our first guitar player, Andy Husted. He was my best friend child, from childhood. We grew up together. Um, our parents were, were really good friends. We didn't go to school together, but we, we would go on camping trips together. We would have barbecues. We'd go to each other's houses. We'd have sleepovers. I recruited him to play guitar. Now, I know at this age, you probably don't want to recruit people to like learn how to play guitar. That's not how it works when you're an adult. But what I'm saying is you, sometimes you have to make things happen. You have to mold things to fit into your world. And however you can do that is, is how to find a band and find people that are, that are, that are going to be with you. All right. I, I don't know. A lot of that probably didn't make any sense. I probably just blabbered and blabbered. I apologize for that. But you know me, I just kind of go off. Um, I hope some of that helps. Like I said, there's no easy button. There's no real. There's no real answer to that. But I think finding something that you're comfortable with, whether it's okay, I'm going to start going to a show once a month, locally, not just big shows. I, I think I think you need to go to smaller shows. You need to see local bands. You need you need to go to shows where your band might be playing. That's the key. A place where you could possibly play. So you don't go to the Enormo Dome in your city, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, or whatever. And go like, all right, I'm going to go to this show and expect to meet some people. Like people aren't, those aren't seen people. Like different types of people go to different types of shows, right? And, and of course, all the people maybe go to the big shows, but not all the people that go to big shows go to the small punk shows. That's a, that's a, very, that's a very niche group of people. So find those people. Um, man, sorry, let's get, to, let's get on to the next one. Hi, Mike. This is Dan Leary calling uh, MXPX memes. A couple of weeks ago, you were like uh, asking, how do you pronounce that middle name thing that I have? The J-O-S? Is it Joss? Is it Jos? <clears throat> and the truth is, you can pronounce it however you want because it's short for Joseph. It's actually a thing that I would not do except for the internet and social media. It's kind of, I guess it's kind of ridiculous but it's short for joseph and there's a ton of daniel j learys and there's a ton of daniel joseph learys so i did that for that reason it's totally pointless say it however you want it wasn't really ever meant to be said out loud but then i liked it i liked that i typed it that way just for social media maybe i shouldn't like it it's pretty silly and stupid but anyway i do have an actual question <clears throat> and it's about on the cover two and the fact that tom sings the lead on okay before you get into tom singing the lead i just got to mention about your name i think you stumbled upon something really cool and you should i, I release you to feel good about it like because it's actually kind of cool like daniel joss leary is how i always say it when i read it not jose jose to me is a cat because i had a we had a cat named josie forever and we call her jose and and it could be the same spelling absolutely you're right but to me, it's Daniel Joss. To other people, it can be Daniel Jose. You guys do do your thing. I don't care. Um, but I like it, and so enjoy that. And, and, it, and it reminds me a lot of like how MXPX started. We we started as Magnified Plaid, 
and then every but but doing the flyer, Yuri wrote M X tiny P X tiny as a period, but everybody just said M X P X instead of M P. And so that name just stu- stuck, and it's kind of silly, but it's kind of cool that we have a name that kind of makes it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. And I feel like you have, I mean, maybe a much simpler version of that where it literally is your name, but you got it. Congratulations. All right, I will let you continue about Tom and his backup vocals. Here we go. Should I stay or should I go? Mm -hmm. I was wondering what the origin of you guys deciding to do that was. I remember I was at the third night of the Troubadour, and the only thing I remember you guys talked about it a little bit ahead of time, but I before you played it, but I don't remember exactly everything you said, except that Tom was like, his parents were really happy that he got to sing lead on a song. Like they were really proud, but like, what was the decision in the studio to have Tom sing that? And I thought maybe it's because it's a Mick Jones led song, not a Joe Strummer led song for the clash. So that way you're actually singing the Joe Strummer part, but was that the parallel or is, was Tom singing the lead on a song? Just an idea you guys had forever. I would love it if, I had suggested this online during in 2018, like a great Kickstarter goal. If you ever do another Kickstarter would be a Tom EP. Just have Tom sing like Chick Magnet and Punk Rock Show. Make him sing like five songs. Like you did the Five Iron Frenzy EP. Do a Tom EP. That's my idea. But we'd love to know <laughs> the origin of Tom singing that song on, on the cover too. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that song was was all Tom's pick. Like he wanted to cover that song. He brought it to the band. And... You're right on. I mean, Mick Jones sings leads on that, and Tom kind of has a Mick Jones kind of vibe, especially when he sings leads. Um, and it, it just worked out perfectly, just like you said, me doing the Joe Strummer part, singing, you know, learning the Spanish bits and all that, and, and it just worked. It worked for us, and it works unlike most cover songs would work, having Tom sing. It just wouldn't be the same if Tom was singing... Um, you know, you know, let's see, I will follow by the U2, <laughs> you know, like something like that, right? Like it's not the same, uh, but yeah, we love it. We, we still, yeah. I mean, we haven't played it live in a while, but eh, we might someday anyway. Um, hope that, hope that works. All right. Next. Hey Mike, it's uh Shana here calling from Toronto, Ontario, Canada again. Um, Thank you so much for uh, airing my uh, back-to-back double-header phone calls tonight. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for uh, plugging the uh, punkrockdadcast.com today. Um, I want to say um, I appreciate you saying, you know, maybe uh, you'll play uh, another question next week. That's super awesome because... Uh, I never actually thought I would um, make the cut. Um, I want to share a quick story because uh, my buddy Johnny, we were uh, camping with uh, our kids, uh, his two girls and my 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 toddler. They're all toddlers, but uh, we were up. Uh, we were camping one day, and he said, "Hey, do you want to start a podcast?" And I said, "No way!" And I like I've 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 been in radio now for 19 years. So I shouldn't be shy, but, uh, anyway, going way back years ago to, I think 1998, I was part of the MXPX or the PXPX fan club. And, you know, I had the beanie, the t-shirt, everything. I got a backstage pass to one of your shows in Toronto where I was allowed to go to the green room and ask you one question. And I was so nervous and I was shy I didn't know what to ask you. I was put on the spot, and I said, uh, 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 so, uh, Mike, what do you think of Canadians? And I was so embarrassed. And you just kind of said, uh, well, you guys are really nice. And, you know, it was kind of a wasted question. So, uh, anyways, it's always uh, really nice to talk to you, and I appreciate you answering my my two questions uh, on uh, this past Monday's uh, podcast. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Cheers. Cheers, Shannon. Thanks for the message, man. You know, I, don't feel so bad about yourself. I did the same kind of thing. 
it wasn't like you get one question that's kind of weird, and I'm sorry that that was told to you. I don't know. It's like weird. But uh, it is what it is. Back in those days, it was like, all right, we're doing these new meet and greet things. And sure, um, ask the band a question. Um, I was doing, we, we did a meet and greet with Elvis Costello in Seattle. And we meaning the band, like we all went to the show together. We did everything together back in those days. And uh, we still do a lot of things together, but we just don't sleep together in the same roof uh most the most nights um anyway we were with Elvis Costello he's like he visibly kind of looked a little under the weather and he was like kind of talking low but he was so nice and we're just like oh my gosh that's Elvis Costello and we're like so what do you think about Seattle like I'm literally the same exact thing you said what do you think about Canadians I said like how you like in Seattle or like the weather or something like so dumb instead of what should have I have asked him, you know, like what was it like working with Huey Lewis, you know, or what was, you know, there's a million questions I should have asked him. Right. Anyway, appreciate the call. Let's do, let's do another one. Yo, Mike, what's up? Matt Katz here, Wilmington NC. So the other day I rewatched the actually live stream Christmas live stream, and it reminded me that I noticed the first time you guys, um, well, when it was actually live, that you guys, or at least the guitars, were using Kemper profilers rather than traditional amp heads. And on all the streams in the past, um, at least it looked like, you know, there were regular amp heads being used. And I know Tom's been on the podcast before talking about his gear and everything, and um, I know that he's talked about the different the different amp heads and stuff he's used and whatever. So, um, yeah, bottom line, never really thought of, of MXPX as being like a modeling, uh, guitar modeling. What am I trying to say? That Tom is like really using guitar modeling. I don't, I don't really know much about Chris's gear, but I thought it was really cool because that's kind of what I've been to and got a lot of different, whether it's outboard stuff, plugins. Um, so anyway, just curious, is that going to be, sort of what you're going to use moving forward? Was it just, it's easier to do for a live stream to go direct from that into the soundboard? Um, is that what you guys are going to be using live? Have you used it live yet? Um, I know a lot of bands are moving towards, whether it's a fractal or a Kemper or whatever, they can take on tour, take your car, take the Kemper, and you don't need to worry about renting amps or, or lugging around amps or anything. So really cool. And um, it sounded great. I thought it sounded really good. So just curious if that's going to be a thing. And also, I would love to know if there has been any utilization of guitar modeling on any MXPX records or even other Monkey Trench stuff. Like if you have a lot of, you've had really much experience with recording with amp modeling, whether it was an outboard piece of gear or a plug-in based, um, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Amplitude or whatever it might be. Anyway, yeah, that would be cool to know about. Um, can't wait for the new record, and thanks. Nice right. call. Oh, okay, sorry. Nice call, man. Uh, yeah, d amp modeling. So for those that don't know, there's like, there's been amp modeling for years, but now it's just getting better and better. So let me start with MXPX loves and prefers real amps, <laughs> and we still use them. Um so, so right off the bat, we recorded and still do record just about everything with real amps, uh, Marshalls, Oranges, uh, Bad Cat, like there's a bunch of different amps we use and Fenders as well. Um, now, that being said, consistency has been a problem over the years doing flyouts and we do a lot of our shows, you know, we'll fly out to a festival, we'll fly out to a, you know, a headlining show, headlining festival, whatever it is. And we have to rent gear no matter what. And so to be more consistent, we've started, you know, using these Kempers, which are modeling the amps that we've already been using. So we've got MXPX, you know, you're, we've got Tom's JMP. We've got Chris's uh, JMP. I think he's got a JMP or 800. And, you know, so he's, we've got all these sounds that we've already recorded with modeled into these Kempers and yeah just consistency is the main reason just because we want it to be as close to the same as as 
as every show. And we're still tweaking that too. Like every, yeah, we have used Kempers. We, we got the Kempers to use for flyouts, for doing live in-person shows. But we started using them also in practice here and on the live streams here in practice. Um, mainly because we need to like work on using them and, and trying to use them. But, but yeah, I mean, it's different when you walk upstairs. I think the most we've used um, the Kemper was on actually the self-titled album. We used it on like some overdubs and a few things like that. But on the new album that we have coming, um, we didn't really use, we didn't really use it. We didn't use Kempers. We just used actual amps and, and really expensive pedals and, and cool stuff. So um, we still get into the analog fully when it comes to, when we have time, when you have time. And when, when you're crafting something, um, that's not the time to use a modeler. I think that's the time to craft your model. So, um, and then you model after that. Once you, once you come up with the tone, then you model that, and then you can use that live. So that's what the Kempers do for us. It's a tool. It's definitely a tool. It's not something that, you know, is a make or break thing, but we're trying it out, and we have been for a couple of years now. So um, people do notice. People do notice. And uh, the, the analog tube people... They, they get bummed out, but nobody else cares. And nobody else knows. <laughs> so uh, let's do one more. Hey, Mike. This is Bobby. Uh, I guess I'm a, I'm a local boy from, well, I grew up in Federal Way, but live further north now. Um, but, yeah, I grew up going to, you know, local punk shows at uh, Club Impact in Tacoma. You've probably been there a few times uh, but you guys got me into punk. First punk album was at the show, the red one, red cover. Um, but yeah, anyways, so I started uh, listening to your podcast, kind of you know, making my way, way through the episodes and um, listened to the one from a couple weeks back with uh, the guy from Naked and Afraid. You mentioned uh, you mentioned that you were on uh, Fixer Upper, the reality show, and I, you know, I thought reality TV is topical right now. Love is Blind is is huge, blown up, and based here in Seattle, um, mm. which I haven't watched actually. I don't know if you have. Me neither. I haven't. Uh, it sounds like maybe half the people on the show are actually from Seattle. The other half are for, from Portland. And, Seems to be kind of a you know back and forth rivalry there. Um, that's what I've heard at least. Anyways, back to reality TV. Yeah, your experience uh, on Fixer Upper. I wanted to see if you would share a little bit more about that. Uh, watch the episode. Actually, no. I don't know what that was. Watch the uh, episode not too long ago for the first time and. Uh, it was good. Kind of seemed like Chip had sort of heard heard of MXTX. MXTX wasn't really mentioned explicitly in the episode at all, um, but was kind of curious, you know, how that came about, what the experience was like with Chip and Joanna. Did Chip actually know about MXTX? Was he a fan beforehand? Was he a fan of punk rock? Um, it sounded like he was really excited to have you on the show. Uh, so you could peel back the curtain i know you talked about that with your guest reality tv peel back the curtain a little bit give us a glimpse of what what it was like on the other side of the camera that'd be great keep doing what you're doing listening to you you know is uh like going back to the good old days uh so love you guys take care dude thanks for checking out the podcast bobby i appreciate it thanks for calling in being part of this Fixer Upper, man, that's a great little topic. Um, I mean, I've talked about it a little bit, and I'll, and I'll go into it behind the scenes. First, I'll just say um, it was surreal getting on the show because we randomly, you know, we'd always wanted to have a place in Texas. My my wife's from Texas, and she's been watch. She had been watching Fixer Upper, and every now and then I'll watch it with her. It's like it's fun. It's cool. It's like Chip, that guy's so funny. Joanne is so awesome, um, and. 
I walked through one day the living room and she's like, Hey, I just signed us up for fixer up. Or if we get on, we're getting a house in Texas. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Not thinking we would ever get on. And, and we did not because you know, they never called us, but Holly, we were in Texas for the holidays and coming back up to Washington with the family in the airport. And she's like, Hey, just uh, here's a picture of the family. Can you post it to Chip and Joanna on Twitter and, and on Instagram or like wherever and say like, we're ready to, to, you know, pick us. We're ready to take these babies to Texas or whatever, you know? And, um, that tweet, you know, the, the assistant must've seen it and showed it to Chip. So Chip wrote back, how can we say no to those beautiful babies? You know, like, like, and from there on, we were pretty much in and we did all the interviews and all that. And they were saying like, somebody left somebody, uh, instead of going, so somebody, dropped out of the show couldn't like they, they didn't get the job they were going to get to move them to Waco or whatever and so they had to cancel the show their 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 thing and so instead of going to the pool of thousands and thousands and thousands of entries which of which one was my wife they saw this tweet and the timing just timed up to be perfect to where they needed somebody that day they're like we need somebody now we need to make this happen you know it's our last season it's the final season we ended up being the final episode of the last season of their whole series, Fixer Upper. Of course, they've come out with a new, a new sort of reboot of it since then, but that was years ago. Um, so anyway, we got on the show. Here we go. Chip and Joe pick us up. They are the nicest people. They're so nice. I don't know if that's all fake or not because we, you know, they're doing their thing. I don't think it is. I think they're pretty nice. And it's got to be hard to be them, as busy as they are, as pulled in so many directions as Joanna Gaines probably is, and especially now. But um, they were super nice to us. Now, to answer your question, did did Chip know MXPX? He, d- I don't think he knows anything about punk rock. For one, he he's heard of the big bands, he's heard of 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 things, but he had heard of MXPX, but he didn't really know who we were. He has friends that knew MXPX. And I think that's, and employees of Magnolia, tons of employees of Magnolia knew MXPX. And because of that, they were like, oh yeah, you got to get these people. You got to get them. And and so like, it was kind of a no brainer from there, but yeah, he played it up pretty good on, oh yeah, these guys, you know, but he probably was kind of excited, even though he didn't know who MXPX was, he was kind of excited that, oh, this guy's a musician. He's, you know, we're going to get to hang out. Um, and, you know, and, and we're feeling the same way about them. You know, they're they're rock stars to us. So it was a great experience and it was nerve wracking. It was it was a little nervous, you know, just like you just I just kind of, you know, let Holly do her thing. You know, it was like what she wanted as far as like the house. But I got to input my ideas into the studio, into like she wanted things that I liked in the house anyway. Like I like a very, I don't know, just like um a very like square kind of like vibe, but um, we're really happy with how everything came out. We still, we still live in the house, not full time. We, you know, we're there part of the year, but um, it's, uh, it's something that, that I'll never forget and, and definitely changed the course of our lives. And uh, for that, I'm grateful, grateful to Magnolia and Chip and Joe and, and the fixer upper team. And we've, we've made a lot of lifetime friends because of that. And, and, a lot of the people we know in, in Waco now, um, it's all because we had the opportunity to be in proximity of them, to, to be down there, to live some life down in Texas and to, to taste some of that sweet Southern life. So uh, <laughs> we had a good time. All right, you guys, uh, that was a good, I hope, I hope that's enough behind the scenes. I could, I could go on and on, but maybe I will again. I uh, appreciate you guys calling in. If you want to call in and uh, leave a voicemail, be on the show, please do. Uh, the number is one three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. Come out and see a show. That really, you know, when you buy tickets, that keeps us rolling. That keeps us making new records and and new music and 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 live streams and all that. So we appreciate you guys for supporting mxpeaks dot com. All right, shout out to Bob McKnight one more time. His show is called the Bob and Katie Show. Um, you can check that podcast anywhere. You can check out my podcast. I think so. All right. If you haven't already done so, if you enjoy watching every now and again, you can see this podcast on my YouTube page, Mike Herrera Video. That's my YouTube. I would love a subscribe if you if you uh, if you ever go there. If not, 
don't subscribe. I don't care. I mean, you know, I don't want people to subscribe and then never watch it. But um, but if you're already watching, that's what, what I would like. I would like to subscribe. If you're already watching, if you're already listening to this podcast, please like it, love it, subscribe, whatever it is on whatever platform you're, you're listening, watching on. All right, you guys. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.